Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good whatever time of day it is for you, good day. Welcome to the um, today's special birthday stream. It's my birthday this weekend. And we're already joined with my uh, Cranky Pants. Yep. Uh, Caramel Cat is who's muted because she's eating right now. Oh, hi everybody. I just unmuted for that. Okay. And Australia is here. He's just AFK at the moment. And also muted. And also muted. And I'm sure, like, is, is Rin working today? I think she have, might not have seen the announcement of, like, oh, it starts earlier. Okay, well, the Dean, the actual d, &D stuff starts, like, in a half an hour, hour. Like, we got time for the d, &D. I wanted to start extra early today because um, I got some packages in the mail. My P.O. box doesn't happen too often, and I wanted to open them on stream. Uh, it's great. What a, I'm a professional, I just had to open up a few things in my stream like I would do earlier. Okay, wait, nope. So, the three packages, they're all from Cranky Pants. Mm -hmm. Birthday gifts for me and gifts for Celia. Celia's asleep right now, so you, you don't wake Celia up this early in the morning. Like, you don't wake her up like early in the afternoon on a Sunday. It's like a sleeping bear. Like, he wakes up when she... Well, I was going to say when she wants to wake up, but no, she doesn't want to wake up at all. Yeah, that's Ricky too. Do you wake her up at pain of death? Yeah, so um, we're not going to wake up Celia. It's like we'll, 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 she she'll find her side of the gift on her own. For now, let's just start off with this package I got here. It is from R and E Upscale Merchant in Lexington. What's Kentucky? Kentucky. 
Caramel, it was KY? Uh, yes, it yeah. is Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, sorry. All right. And... Yeah, the companies don't tell me anything, to be honest. Um, I thought I put my scissors here. But if I gotta bring my... I, I forgot my scissors. Come it's on. Gonna... Oh. What kind of professional are you? I am Beck. I'm the best professional. Well, welcome, Cerulea. He's also here. Hey, sir. Hey, Caramel. All right. Well, while he does that, Cogent, I get two points, right, for attributes. And with skills, you get eight plus three for every point in intelligence. Good. All right. Couldn't find the scissors, but I got a knife. How do you not have scissors? I mean, we do have scissors. I just don't know where they are. Where the heck did you go? Yeah, hopefully I don't slice up the gift in there. Right? I have no idea which package will contain what, so I have this also in surprise me. First one is... what is this? Um, oh! The Hopius! Coffee, Raid Maker, Hoppies? Hoppies? Hoppies. Hoppies. Say that one more time. Hoppies. Hoppies? Hoppies. Hoppies. Yeah. Basically, these Maybe are... not very helpful with pronunciation. <laughs> Basically, these are genuine coffee candies made with real coffee. And if you put them in warm milk and just stir, you have literally like a cup of coffee. Okay, I gotta, I gotta try this. It's good. <laughs> it's not like that fake coffee flavor, they're just like, I'm chewing on coffee, what the fuck? Okay, let, let me, wait, are there ingredients listed on here? I want to know how much high fructose corn syrup is in here. Most likely it will be in Dutch. Uh... Australia, your keyboard is very loud. Okay, this isn't written in American, so... Aha! Very good. <laughs> Alright. Well, since it's not American, I could assume there's like little to no high fructose corn syrup. So this might be the yeah. real deal. It's the real sugar. The right. real deal. Alright, this is what it looks hey. like. They're very tiny, but they're nice. Oh, it's hard candy. I yeah. wasn't expecting that. It's crunchy. Oh, wow. It's like I just bit into a sweet coffee bean. And since it's a hard candy, nice. it is really sticking to the crevices. Yeah. Teeth. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be tasting that all day. Not just complaining. Just amazing. Okay. <laughs> well, let me wash this down with some coffee. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be talking weird now. I got like the, the right side of my teeth, my, my molars, are just layered. With this uh, hard candy. Yeah, if you if you bite too hard, it can be that you have problems move removing your jaw from your shoulder. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> nope. You know that's that's a problem for later. Moving on to the next package, hilarious. which is from R and E Upscale Merchant, also from Lexington, Kentucky. Hmm. All right. Let's right, see what we have in here. Okay. Ooh. This is uh, well, I should recognize that. It's a tin can. I know exactly what this is, and I'm very excited. Okay, I better not like open this up and have to like pull out like a, a bunny bikini outfit I have to wear. Uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> bunny bikini. Because then this entire camera is just gonna be neck high. Because I, <laughs> you know, because technically I'm wearing it, <laughs> you just can't see it. Mm -hmm. It's more comfortable than I expected. Pixar didn't happen. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. And, and and it's taped together. Yeah. All right. For solidity. All right. Am I gonna open it up? And it's gonna be like another can I gotta open up. Oh, it would be would be wonderful. I think it would never be that candid. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's like wafer cookies. Yes. Oh, let me show you. Yes. I'm sure the tin can has like a sailboat. Honey. Cookies. It's like a couple kissing, a building, a windmill, and a dude on yeah, a horse. Hey, just keep staring at it for a while, and eventually it will become clear. Wait. As he puts it down. Oh, is it? It is, is something it that I actually have talked a lot about. 
Okay. I'm very excited! So, let's try this out. Uh, Yeah, I'm gonna dip this in my coffee. I'm gonna Why break off. Uh, first oh the wow! This is much. This is chewy. Like yep. I, I thought it was gonna be like a, like a wafer cookie. Yep. You just snap off. I've never seen No, stuff. they are fucking phenomenal. Okay, I taste cinnamon in there. Is that brown sugar? What else is that in there? I'm trying to figure out what the gooey stuff is. Okay, let me dip into my coffee. It's a pretty obvious name, given who's here. And no, it is not an ingredient called cranky. <laughs> it makes you cranky, though. Oh no, this, mm. these won't. When, when you're out of them, you get super cranky. Yeah, yeah, okay. That, that's a mm, different question. <laughs> but if I, I need to eat a little more before I figure it out. Mm. Mm. Maybe a little more. <laughs> oh. ah, <that's> <laughs> it goes really well with coffee. Hmm. Ironically, it's actually like peeling off the bits of hard candy coffee in my teeth. <laughs> that is really ironic. Yeah, I can't figure out what it, like what else what is in there. Caramel. Wah, wah. You know, <laughs> I think I would have never guessed that. It's like I, I thought you was like it was like a reference to cranky in some way. So like okay, it has to be some like Dutch Netherlands well, cranky you have land heard thing. Me and Ren talk about Struvals a lot, right? I've heard the word. I still don't know yeah, what it is. Now you have this one. A stew false? That's what it is? Stroopwafel. In Dutch is stroopwafel, and in English is troopwafel. Like you said, the exact same word. Yeah, my, yeah, my birds in American ears can't tell the difference. <laughs> no, I, 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 just, I just blame the fact that I only understand American. No, but I even like the can. Yeah. I'm going to Warhammerize this somehow. If you, okay, have you ever heard me use that term before, war, Warhammerize? Yes. No, I honestly don't know what you mean with that. Right. Well, you know I have several Warhammer 40k armies, right? Mm -hmm. And I used to be huge into creating the armies. Not just painting, but just creating armies. But I was also very poor. So I couldn't really afford the armies. Or the terrain, because I really wanted to make terrain and structures and stuff. And Celia could verify this for me whenever she wakes up. So I would just go out and about and find any junk. Any junk like uh, this laying around, even like stuff on the street. And I was like, oh, I could turn this into a terrain piece. It's like anything I was going to like throw, like, like, well, before I throw this out, can I cut this up, glue it together in some way and make a terrain piece? Can I make a building? Can I make a crater? Can I make a cannon for the orcs? Half of my orc army, like the vehicles, are made up of junk I just kind of like found in a goodwill. So when I say I might be able to warhammerize this, it means I might be able to turn this into like a 40k building or an orc tank somehow. And then since this lit up, I can probably like put a hinge on it, so like you know, just opens up and the orcs just pour out. Coco. Yep. Um, a little note. My brother says that if you had a bit of hair, uh, you would look like uh, Blackbeard from uh, Lost Pirate Kingdom. Or, if Blackbeard had a little bit less hair, he'd look like me. Well, seeing that he always had like lit fuses attached to his uh, hat, I can't imagine that he has a few bald spots. So well, funny. <laughs> well, we have one last package. This one, I'm, this one's actually kind of heavy, and it is from USPS. Uh, wait, nope, that's not it. No, it's from P Black S Orange, O seven two four plus six thousand. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think this would be able to be... Oh, wait, no, here we go. Yeah, this is also something I sent at Carmel. Great Horde, 3837, Bay Lake, um, North Las Vegas, Nevada. What? Oh, oh my god, the reason I brought up uh, Warhammer Horizon that can, for my birthday, Celia got me a 
pretty hefty gift card for game workshops. It's like enough money that I might be able to actually buy two models. Oh. I mean, maybe one and a half, like one model and then the base for a second one. But, you know, let's face it, several hundred dollars isn't going to be much in Game Workshop. No. So that could have. Right. Because it's a bag full of gluten. Let's see here. I like gluten. Wait, wait, what, what is, what is, wait, what did you say? Oh lord, I did not know that it was that much. <laughs> Those are four times as four times more than I actually expected. Um... This, this is why I was worried when I picked up this bag. It's like, man, there's something, something heavy in here. There's going to be a weird costume I'm going to have to wear. Nope, it's uh four packages of okay. The, uh, let me try to pronounce it. Um, speculas. 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 Oh, here, let, let me. Okay, the bag's kind of like folded, so I'm going to try to... Yeah. Yeah, speculas. Yeah. So yeah, these are... It's like graham cookies. Not graham cookies, but... Spiced oh, cookies. Well. Ingredients, wheat flour, sugar, vegetable oil, um, spices. Oh, there we go. It's glutose syrup. But not glutose high corn syrup. Then there's whey powder, sugar, syrup, invert sugar. What, what is invert sugar candy? And that's a secret ingredient from the Netherlands that I'm not supposed to talk about. <laughs> secret ingredient. If I told you, I had to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the reasons why the VOC was so powerful. Alright, let's see here. Let's get a better look at that name now. So we got four packages. This is going to last us a while. Seeing how Caramel reacted to the cookies, I doubt it. They, 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 they won't last long. What kind of cookie is that? Well, we're going to find Just out. Wait. Just wait. Huh. Oh, jeez. Okay, so it looks like there's three packages of these in each package. So we got 12 of these cookie packages. Yeah, the extra packaging is just purely an attempt of slowing people down, but it never works. Okay. Let's see here. Dude, this is very, very crumbly. You know what? Let me go get a, a plate, because I don't want crumbs to fall over my desk. Yeah, it, uh, the here, package just looks a little bit smashed, if I'm honest. Yeah, they weren't too gentle with it, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm very curious how he's going to react to those. <laughs> I love the troop waffles. They just be like, yeah, these are. Oh my god, these are fucking amazing. Yeah, I need a, need a little bit more. And yeah, a just bit more. Just a little bit more, and then uh, one bit. more bite. Just this one. Yeah, that's. One foot round. It. Uh, just, I know that pistol waffles are generally All right. very light. All right, got a bowl. Oh, they're good. They're so good. Uh, okay, yep. Yeah, uh, well, just a little bit broken up, but. That's why, you know, it's all going to the same place anyway. Hmm. It's a ginger cookie. Definitely tastes of ginger. Ginger. Wait, I've tasted this before. What is this? I'm trying to remember where this flavor is from. This is definitely the glutose syrup. <laughs> glutose syrup? <laughs> Yeah, yeah they the two products without them and suddenly you recognize it. Yeah, let me like, put that under the coffee. Also, there is a general joke going around of like, the Dutch people don't use a lot of spices in the food, but uh, but you can guess where all the spices went. <laughs> yeah, it's, it went to the candy. Yeah, it went to that's, those fucking no, no, there, there, there That's is a, fucking funny. There is a lot in here. Yeah. It's like, it's like an explosion of different types of flavors going off. Yeah. Right now. No, pretty good. I'm gonna have to put this down. We 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 got a stream. I need to save that. Otherwise, this is, this is going to become a mukbang stream. <laughs> okay. Also, someone needs to fudge your character character yeah, sheet. I got part of it. That's that's also why I said it's for you and Celia before you hoard it all. 
<laughs> Coco. Yes? You do know you're the only person on the Glamesh who uses the ta- hashtag, or rather the tag, Bearded Gamer. What? Well, okay, not everybody. Hey, that's be, marketing right there. Not all of us can be blessed. <laughs> You know, one oh, does not one simply become That's... the bearded gamer. Like, the beard chooses you. Yeah, but me, this is a slow call fucking up. <laughs> but, so, which one was your favorite? I'm definitely, like, it, it, it's tough. Because I like them all, and for different reasons. Yeah, I basically yeah. sent it to you my top three of favorite candies. It's like, these, I would definitely want to heat up some of some oat milk, dip this in there, and see how well the coffee comes out. Because I did like this, but I guess this isn't something I could binge eat on. Because otherwise my mouth would be sealed, and I wouldn't be able to like move my jaw at all. Yeah, there's literally something you pop in your mouth, and you basically just keep in your mouth, and it slowly melts. The, uh, cam- slowly. Yeah, the caramel wafer was also really good. Uh, mm-hmm. These things. Yeah, people normally get like a hot beverage and place one on top of the beverage so it's warm. No, definitely gonna try that. In fact, I'm gonna have to get a refill of coffee. That reminds me. But um, I'm right now. I'm gonna have to go with this. Ah, the glory of the Netherlands. <laughs> the Netherlands. Yeah, it's, it's like I like I said. I like them all for different reasons. But right now, it's like the multitude of like I'm gonna like this the most until I get sick of it or eating it too much. And then I'll probably move back down to these because the flavors were good here, but it was more subtle. Like it was less aggressive on the taste buds than those wafers were, or than these crackers were. And this is a nice snack to have when I just run out of coffee. Now this was a, a really like um what do you call it? like a like a dark roast kind of coffee flavor. No, but thank you very much, Cranky. No problem. These are, these are awesome. So, now let's talk about D&D. We are using the cogent system. Um, who needs help finishing up their character? I do. Okay, Caramel. Oh, FYI, guys, like we're not going to do this today, but there is an update to the cogent, um, cogent rule set. They made some changes to the character sheet. We're not going to worry about that today. Because it's going to be something I'm going to need to relearn, and I don't want to do that in the last moment. So we're just going to do what the rules have, that we have been doing, because it's more familiar that way. How many skills do you usually start with? I can't remember. Two. Um, now, attribute points, you get two points. Skill points, you start with eight. You get an extra two for disabling characteristic, which each of you are going to have to roll up one disabling characteristic. So that makes ten you skill points. You still get points. the benefits of it. Yeah, so you, you so you get ten points, and then you get an additional three points for each point you put into each attribute point you put into intelligence. All right, so I got eighteen on my roll. Okay, eighteen. Let's see. Your disabling characteristic is gullible. Oh, totally perfect. You get a three dice penalty versus deception checks. Go. Now the premise of this show is um okay. Uh, Cr- Cranky says he hasn't seen either of these. Caramel, so really, have either of you ever seen the show Sliders or Quantum Leap? No, I love Quantum Leap. Okay. Uh, by the way, I rolled an 11. Okay, so really, you are very forgetful. That matches my character, I guess. Uh, now I, get, I can see this becoming very problematic. <laughs> it's going to be very, very problematic. Okay. So, the idea is you're all from different dimensions. For one reason or another, like you probably you walked through a door or you woke up one day and you're in a different place. Yeah, like, some way somehow, you you jumped to a different dimension, and you're all together. There's this organization that keeps track of dimension hoppers. And they found you, and now you are under their employee, whether willingly or otherwise. And now your job is to jump from dimension to dimension, fixing whatever problems you are told to fix. 
and if you do this enough times, you'll be returned to your home world. Uh, Cranky, you might remember the cartoon Time Squad, right? The name is familiar. Uh, it had the, the little boy who's a historian, Larry the Robot, and this big beefy guy. Um, they went back and fixed all of history's worst mistakes. Like... How is it called again? Time Squad? Time Squad, let me google that. For the same thing you're gonna unlock a part of my fucking childhood, I... Holy fuck. I know for a fact that you would have watched this because you. Yeah, I, I, yeah. it seems very fucking familiar. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> didn't, didn't it have like a robot, some really big burly guy, and a kid? Yep, yeah, that's and, it. and the robot was basically C3PO, that he was like made for linguistics, but they put him on here because the world had solved all peace and he had no job anymore. And then the big idiot guy, and neither of them know shit about history, so they abducted no. this kid who loves history. I remember, yeah, I, I watched that show all the time. I love that show. Yeah, basically I don't think this. I've heard that scene I sorry I didn't think you would have, but Cranky's watched so many cartoons that I've watched when I was a kid that I'm 90% sure he would have seen this one. Okay, so your characters, like the times, it's going to be from your time world, well, from your dimension, it's going to be like modern day time. You're regular people, or you could be regular people. You can make up whatever kind of personality or character backstory you want. This is just a one shot, so, you know, go for it. But this isn't a fantasy universe like um, Dungeons and Dragons or Final Fantasy or anything like that. Like, I wanted to keep this very much like in the Sliders kind of realm. I love the, sli the show Sliders. Did they ever have a season's finale? Like, I kind of dropped off after the, the last few seasons, so I don't know how it ended. If it did. I haven't seen Slider, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, no. oh yeah, you said you watched Quantum Leap. Let's see. I love Quantum Leap. Slider. Well, Sliders is very much like Quantum Leap. It's like, the, the idea behind Sliders was there's this group of people, like, one of them is, like, this, this college student who's a genius. And he was working with his professor trying to find out like this weird mathematical equ equation with which is like the like the, the creation of the universe or something. I forget what it was. And those and he was trying to create this device so he could look into other worlds. Well, it, it kind of worked, but the device broke. And now like um, a portal opened up. Him and his friends and his professor and some random guy who just happened to be outside his house all got teleported to a different dimension. And the device is kind of busted. So now they're on a time limit. And like every few minutes, hours, days, it's always random. It's like they're going to get teleported to another world. And they just keep jumping from world to world, hoping that the next one is going to be their home. So sometimes they go into a world that's kind of similar to their home. But they don't know, so they got to figure it out, and they're on a time limit. And then something weird will happen. It's like, oh, wait, yeah, we didn't have birds of human heads in our world, so this is this is a different world. Or they get teleported to a world that's kind of like in the past. So they're in like a World War II kind of situation, but they're in Germany, and the bombs are about to... No, Japan, and the bombs are about to drop. That would be a fucked up time to go back to. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's been several times they were like they went into a world where the apocalypse was happening and they had to try to survive before or after the apocalypse happened. One time like there was like this disease was going out that's wiping out everybody in the world. And turned out that the solution to this was penicillin. This dimension never created penicillin. So they, when they figured out, like, they didn't, nobody here knew what penicillin was, they had to try to create penicillin and hope that was the answer to their problem. So, interesting situations like that. There was another time they went to the Jurassic era, where humans were hunted by dinosaurs. How old is this show? Because Quantum Leap was, like, 80s. Uh, Sliders, I want to say 90s. Okay. Because Wait, I remember... Yeah, Quantum Leap is 80s, yeah. Yeah, uh, let's see, let me look it up, um, I guess I'm pretty sure it's in the 90s, I think I was still in New York when I was watching this, Sliders TV show. 
and then I'm DMing you my sheet. Coco, see if this is okie doke. All right, take a look in a second. Uh, yeah, whenever you can. They had five seasons. It was 95 to 2000. So mid to late 90s. By the way, Coco, yeah. uh, just so you know, uh, like last time and the next couple of times, I have to go half an hour earlier. Okay, no worries. Um, hopefully, Ren will jump in soon. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Six, I know seven, Rin eight. said that they were like with their family or something today and weren't sure if they were going to be free in time because they weren't sure how long it was going to last. Okay, um, Caramel, you do have two more skill points to give to your disabling characteristic. Oh, sweet. Okay, I'll just okay, throw now, it in. Now, do you understand what vocations are? Uh, here, no. Um, they're kind of like your job. And you could uh, you could apply these as assist skills to other skills. So let's say, because it looks like you're making a very like strong, burly person. Let's say your vocation yep. was you're a wrestler or you're a boxer. So if you're trying to use like your grapple check to try to hold somebody down, you can say like, okay, I'm going to use my vocation wrestling to assist me in this skill. Oh, okay, sweet. So how many vocations can I pick? One or two? Um, as many as you have skill points. Technically, you, you could have picked eight vocations and have not, nothing in your skills. It would have been weird. But you could do it. There's okay, no... so I'll yeah. put in two more skill points somewhere, and then um, a vocation or two. Well, no, well, no, those the skill points go into vocations. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So you can have as many vocations so as skill points. I think my character is ready. Yeah, Gamma, so long you can make the vocation make sense to your character, you can just go nuts. And I, w okay. and I would recommend, this is a recommendation, like for an assist skill to really be effective, you do want a lot of points into it. Because the way assist skills work in Kojin, and I'm trying to remember, it's been a while. It's kind of a gamble when you try to use an assist skill. So, oh, this also works for combat too. Like you use your skill points for any combat abilities you want. Like hand-to-hand -hand weapons, knife, gun, whatever. So, the same example caramel. You want to hold somebody down, you have grapple. How many points did you put into your grapple? Two. So in Cogent, you start off with three dice, three six out of dice. You put two points into your grapple. All right, now you have five. Grapple is a strength skill. You have two points of strength. Now you have seven. And let's say you're trying to grapple something really strong, like a gorilla. And I say, okay, gorillas are really strong. You're going to have a difficulty check of a five. So when you roll your seven dice, by the way, a five is incredibly difficult. When you roll your seven dice, you need at least five successes. A success is a four or a higher on a six out of dice. So you're looking at it like, hmm, that's still going to be really tough for me to do. I want to use my wrestling skill as an assist. All right? Yes, run it one sec. Sorry, cat aggro, one sec. I will wait for Caramel to get back from the cat god. I know. Can somebody uh, DM Ren to see if she'll be able to make it, please? Yep. I think my character is ready. It's um, gonna be a fun one. All right. When we get all the characters made, we'll, I'll have you guys do your introductions with your characters. While Caramel's doing the cat thing, I'm going to get a refill on my coffee. So, be right back, guys. Take your time. Uh, keep the stream entertained, please. Also, uh, sorry, a quick question, but have you uh, that crisp noise suppression on? Wait, what? And next to basically the disconnect button, uh, the, uh, you have a noise suppression powered by crisp. Oh, I don't have that. You don't have that on, or...? I don't have crisp. <laughs> Everybody has it. It comes with Discord. Hey, back, sorry. Why don't you have it? I can see that. Does this work? Well, it's actually more... It will drown out noises like typing and such, and background noises. Fair. 
Do I type something just somewhere randomly? I am. I don't hear your uh, keyboard anymore. Yeah, but I can I can see this one now. That's nice. Hmm. I was wondering why your keyboard was always that fucking loud, and then sometimes not. <laughs> it was really loud, wasn't it? Oh uh, yeah. Okay, and then so, sorry, silly question. On vocations for the assist skills, there's two boxes. Do I fill those in too, or? Uh, wait, what? So uh, under vocations. The... And then there's two boxes next to it. So I like put in my vocations and do I put in any skills in the assist skills or? Uh, I don't know. Eh, fuck it. It's all good. Uh, These characters are going to die in five minutes anyways. From what I understood, that part you're talking about right there is um, basically where you put your points. Your skill points. Oh, so like instead of putting them in skills or whatever, you'd put them in assist skills? Yeah, vocations and such is also the same skill points you use. Okay. Alright, sweet. So I'll just put that in here then. But um, Coco will be right back. He, While you were away, he would go grab some coffee. Alright, sweet. I'm really happy that he likes it. Alright, I'm back. Is Camo here? Hey. Yep, I'm here. All right. So, back to the example. You're doing a wrestling, or you're going to do a wrestling assist. This is going to be a separate row to see if the assist works. So, the basic difficulty check for an assist will be three dice. Or, 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 or three. So, you got to get higher than three. The way that will work is you, you get your three base dice, then you add whoever dice you have in your points. So let's say you put two points in a wrestling. Now you have five dice. You'll roll that and for every success you get above a three counts as a bonus success you get on your grapple check. But if you get under a three you get a failure. No, 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 you, you remove a dice from your grapple check. So it's a gamble. Gambling is what I do. So, and I just uh, added more points and reset the sheet. I think that should be good now. Alright, let me take a look. It should have 10 points now. One, two, three, four, five. You can make the character sheet on the actual website. For the uh, cogent. Well, Caramos has been using, uh, I think, Photoshop to paint, paint the boxes. Yep, it's Photoshop. All right, so, oh, this, was anybody able to, to contact Ren? Uh, uh, I sent a me... message, but no response. Okay. Probably, and I'm looking at their Twitter, it's definitely with the family, so I'm not sure for how long, though. All right. So, um, oh, wait, 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 that's right. Didn't Ren tell us last week that she was doing a thing, um, no, like, uh, there was an anniversary like a... of a family member's passing? Yes, like, and they said they weren't sure if it was going to last till late in the evening or when. Okay, so we'll assume Ren is still with the family. So, is everybody on roll 20? Yes. Is everybody watching the stream? Because I'm going to be showing the images on stream. I won't be able I've to... Got the stream ready. Yeah, it'll be too slow for me to import them into roll 20 to show it there. So, if you guys want to see the images, have a... Have a My Little Mesh stream. It's FTL <laughs> streaming. I am watching your stream now. Ready, Freddy. Okay. Let's get the music going. I wanted something very Twilight Zone for this. So, <laughs> as we have mentioned, each of our protagonists were taken from their world and sucked into a different dimension. Now they're working for a bureau that tries to fix changes in other dimensions and put them in the right path. They do this in order to try to get back home. Each of them are from a different world, a different time. But they are all must work together. 
Firstly, Cranky Pants, would you like to introduce your character? Hi. Your name is Mitch. I'm a marksman in the Orc army. One day I woke up in a weird area and a weird voice told me to fix stuff. And on the way I met two other weird people. Oh, so that's what the scenario was for. That's right. Okay, so interesting. Mitch, the marksman, the mark, markman, the marksman, marksman orc, the 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 sniper orc. No marksman. Marksman. Okay. Sniper is long distance, very long distance. Marksman is just normal long distance. Oh, I didn't know the difference. I thought marksman and sniper are the same thing. Um, okay. Marksman can hit long distances without needing a scope. Sniper is you need a scope to be able to see your target. Gotcha. All right. Next up, Cerulea. Tell us your character. You gotta loop that. Uh, I am Neck. Mm -hmm. Neck. Uh, I'm a goblin. Um, I don't know how I got here. Last I saw, I was in a city uh, inside a pub. Just a normal, having some fun with the friends. Uh, when the screaming appeared uh, in the city, looking out, some stupid halflings uh, trying to run away from a hook horror. Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, something shiny, some shiny light blinded me. And I was here. So what was your character's name again? Neck. 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 G-N-A-C. G-N-A-C. Okay. Neck, the goblin. He's got a neck for this. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Caramel Cactus, tell us of your character. <clears throat> Hello, Hellroos. I am Mass Strength. And it is all right. Why? Because I am here. And he's too stupid to really say anything else, so that's him. Uh, the cringe. <laughs> the cringe is strong in this one. You said we could do whatever we wanted. I, I did. I did. Okay, all might. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Was, I'm sorry. Max, <laughs> max strength. Mass strength. Mass strength. There, there is no all might here. Yeah, no, no, of course not. This is Mass Strength, a completely original character. Completely original character. Who is, uh, wait, let me take a look at that character sheet one more time. <laughs> who, who is, um, six foot four, 40 years old, uh, muscular, I'm looking for blonde hair. Is there, okay, there's a blonde hair description. It said disposition, not, um, not what they look like. Yeah, so. What is a character disposition to be exact? Uh, sort of like how your personality. Uh, fair. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. what I had. Yeah, about as wide as he is tall, shoulder, shoulder width. All right. So, today's job, you are sent to a new dimension, and let's see, okay, who has scenarios for me? So we're already ready. I have one ready, if you want. Okay, this caramel. What? Um, who else has a scenario ready? We're going to pick this at random. Okay. I am DMing you right now, Coco. Okay, wait. Uh, don't DM me. Just okay. Well, you already got it. Oh shit! Uh, I'll delete it. Don't no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just gonna look at uh, look at something else. Okay, so. Okay. Caramel has one. Cranky, you said you have one. Cranky. Yes. Did you say you have one? Yes. Okay, so really, you you have one. Um, I'm thinking of one. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna roll a D two. One cranky, two caramel. Cranky, send me your scenario. Aww. Don't worry, everybody's going to get a turn. I'm very curious what he got. I am, I am going to send you the image that belongs to the scenario, but there is a story behind it. Where are you? Uh, uh, out of context is much funnier. Okay, no, I'm going to have to come up to the story. Like, I'm sure there is a story. We could talk about that afterwards, but I'm going to have to try to come up with a scenario here. All right, this is, oh my God. <laughs> like I told you, I looked long and hard for the image. Oh yeah, long it's and hard, tape. gotcha. Long and hard. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, you know, I've seen this movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Wait, what? Yeah, well, you, you thought oh. I, 
I'm an old man. You don't think I would have known of this movie? Okay. Um. <clears throat> so, what the hell am I gonna do with this? All right. Here is the image. Oh my freaking Jesus! Of, co of course, family stream. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <Alrighty>. Okay. <laughs> safe walk. Um. <laughs> okay, so you're all transported into, uh, hmm, into a movie theater, specifically the projection room where the movie Clockwork Orange is being filmed. This is a debut for this movie, and it is very important that it does well, because many critics are in the theater watching it. But you see that there's trouble with the projection equipment in this room. There's nobody working here. Whoever, wherever the staff is, they must be on break. But you can see that the equipment is getting ready to shut down, unless fixed. In order for this movie to become the cult hit classic that it is and set the world right you need to make sure this equipment remains working I bet you didn't think I'd come up with something like that no I did not think that no okay no no I was not gonna put you in a like a, a rape scene room jeez yeah I'm, I'm glad for that thank you <laughs> all right so you know you know I'm just gonna leave this image here <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> Alright, so, you know, let me open up the original so we get a bigger... There we go. There we go, that's unfortunately better. Alright. So, this is going to be like a skill check challenge. Oh dear. So we're going to start from left to right. Cranky pants. Yeah. Even though you're an orc, like, you're not too unfamiliar with what this equipment is. And you do know that there's going to be some technical issues going on. What are you going to do with your skill set to fix this issue? And let me know if this music dis is distracting. I could turn it off. I think it's fine. It's, um, it's making this picture even more uncomfortable with this music, now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, I really hope Shalin doesn't pop in right now. <laughs> All right. Uh, how big is the projector? Um, the projector is like it's, it's sitting on a table. On the table is probably about uh, six feet high, but the projector itself is probably like a meter, not like a meter in height. So about three feet. Yeah. Um, does it look like it will fall apart any second? Um, you could definitely tell that um, some of the gears within it is really worn out, and it's getting ready to like um unrattle itself. No idea what I can do with much. You could come up with a different um, issue that's going on in this room, or even outside the room in the theater that you could fix with your skills. Can I take care of rowdy uh, movie theater uh, visitors? You do yeah, notice I'm that you, you you look out into the theater, and you notice that there is a. Um, a group of kids. When I say kids, I mean, you know, like a late teens, uh, like high school, maybe college kids, that are starting to oh, ruckus, shit. and they are distracting some of the people in the audience, including the critics. Is my, is my character allowed a weapon? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, but May I choose that weapon? Um, as as long as it's not super sci-fi, like something basic. Oh no, it is. Uh, it's a Springfield. That works. 
So, so I basically go into the into the theater. I normally walk behind the kids, and I lay the barrel on one of their shoulder and go like, "If you're not quiet." Now this sounds like you're trying to intimidate them. Yep. So let me see. Is there an intimidation skill on this character trait? Uh, persuasion. There's persuasion. Perception. Okay. This will be persuasion. A, a persuasion yep. check. Okay. Now, do you have any assist skills you would like to... Like, I haven't seen your character sheet. So I don't know how many, where you got your points spread out. <clears throat> Is there anything you want to do to assist this? Uh, so how many points do you have in Persuasion? Wait, well, your mic kind of cut out. I didn't hear it. Two. Two. Also, I have one point in Intelligence, so that makes it three. All right, so you're gonna have three. So you have six dice to roll here. Since uh, you are bringing out a gun, I am. You won't have a difficulty check of. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna put a three to get the result you want. It is easy to scare these kids, but in order to, but you also don't want to cause a panic in the theater as well. So a three to properly scare them without having anybody panic. Okay. So, roll, roll again, uh, uh, 6d6. 6 6. You need to get at least 3 of these dice to be 4 or higher. 1, 2, 3, on the dot. Oh, Ooh, that was lucky. That was mm. luck. Okay. You, you put the barrel of the gun on one of the kid's shoulders. The the kid, will say he's like 19, 20-ish, like that. It looks like he's about to turn around and like and like see something really nasty to you until he realizes what it is exactly on his shoulder. <laughs> and you can see the blood drain from his face, and he kind of freaks out. His friends notice the silence, and they look over and they see what's going on, and they all go ghost quiet. In fact, they don't even they don't get up. They are glued to their seats. They don't know what to do. But it seems you have pacified this group for now. Sorelia, you're up. Are there any s small items near the uh, projector? What do you mean, slow items? Um, oh, oh, you say slow or small items? Small. Oh, yeah, no, yes, there's going to be multiple small items. Like, what kind of items do you look for particularly? Uh, just a few bits of metal, uh, such possibly. Small pieces that could potential uh replace parts of the projector okay yeah um like nearby like you find uh like a toolbox that has some spare pieces of scrap some screws some nuts some extra bits you could use to fix any machinery in here is it possible to use um a thief location to do a um switch so you want to do like a like a sleight of hand kind of thing? Yeah, a sleight of hand, change it part without uh, breaking. Okay, now I believe sleight of hand is a skill, correct? It is. Okay, and you could use your defocation to assist you. Is that what you would like to do? That is what I was thinking. Okay. But now, uh, now the vocations they are a gamble. You could just roll up your straight up sleight of hand. I'm going to give you a difficulty check of a three on this. Uh, if you... Then I'm just gonna roll sleight of hand since. Uh... Okay, how many dice do you get with sleight of hand? Uh, four. Four? Okay, you have... No, wait, I have... Uh, my two for reference, my... The three star, that's five plus two, that's seven. Okay, you have seven total dice. You need to get three or higher successes. Go ahead and roll. Higher than four, right? You have four or higher, you need to get at least three, four or higher on this. You got it on the... Wow, you got three ones on that one, too. <laughs> That's so Sorelia. Hey. Alright. Sorelia, <laughs> and Nag pulls out the toolbox and begins rummaging through the the tools, the scraps, the replacement parts. And while the projector is running, you find it very difficult to try to <laughs> fix it while it's turned on. A few times you get a few sparks. Um, you slightly shock yourself, not in too damaging, but you are able to keep the projector together and still run without interrupting 
the movie going experience for everybody else. Caramel. I am proud considering I'm a thief. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, so the projector is running again? For now. If you want another problem to happen to the projector, you can. How's about a problem with either critics looking like they're entertained by this, or... Like, I guess... I guess hmm. I'm more worried about them. Caramel, okay, you hear a noise outside the room. You look out and you see that some very rude person has thrown a lit cigarette into one of the trash cans. The trash can is beginning to smoke up and catch fire. If this keeps up, the smoke alarm is going to go off and the sprinkler is going to turn on. If this happens, it's going to ruin the experience for everybody in the theater. What do you do? And this is just in the hall. Okay. Oh, I this see is this is saying. in the right, hallway, so. but like simply picking up the trash can and moving out would be difficult because you have a little bit of a ways to go to get outside, and it's going to be very difficult for the smoke to not hit the smoke alarms. Oh shit. Okay. All right. Hm. All right. Yeah, fuck it. We came here to have fun. Let's do it. So mass strength gathers himself up and heads out there. Ha-ha! I am here, disposing of this trash can! He says probably too loudly. Picks it up and tries to throw it down the hallway towards the lobby. You're going to throw the trash can, the flame, well, the potentially flaming trash can into the lobby. That is your answer. Yes. Yes, we, I, I, all he cares about is protecting this one movement. All, all right. That, uh, that was the goal, and he's a gullible idiot, so that's what he's going to do. Okay, do you have any points in throw? Uh, yes, two. Okay. Give me a throw check. You could, If you could come up with a reasonable... Like, if you want to do an assist skill, you know, make it make sense. Otherwise, you could just do uh, a straight-up throw skill. He's Did, also a wrestler, so he has a lot of experience, like, taking, like, tables and everything into the ring. So, picking up heavy objects. All right, I'll let you use wrestling for this. If you want to use it hey. as an assist. Uh, so I roll um, how many d6? First, I tell you the difficulty check. I'm also going to okay, make this perfect. a 3. Okay. If you think you need an assist for this, you can roll for your assist. But remember, that is a gamble. I He doesn't think he needs an assist. He's strong. Okay, so it's going to be 3 dice plus your strength plus whatever points you put into throw. Okay, so let's see. Strength sets... Five, seven. Seven, six. Okay. See, you got... Uh, oh, shit. Okay, uh, slash. Got no so space. I put a space in there. My bad. There we go. Oh. Uh, you got two successes. Caramel. I thought it was three, so five, five, three. No, no. The success is four or higher. Oh, shit. Okay, well, that... Oh, ooh. Well, the building's about to burn down. Caramel. Um, what was the character's name again? <laughs> Mass Strength. Mass Strength. Mass Strength. You pick up the trash can. And you're about to hurl it, but it's uh, hotter than you expected it to be at the touch. When you fling it, you throw it up, it's off balance. Trash, flaming trash, <laughs> um, spews across down the hallway. Now, it is scattered. So it's not grouped up, but you do see like smolders, and it hasn't caught anything else on fire yet. Something needs to be done very quickly before this goes out of hand. Um, Mitch, that's cranky. That's cranky. Yeah, yeah, Mitch. Yep. You exit the theater, you know, after uh, silence in the ruffians. And when you walk down the hallway, you see a trash can, a flaming trash can get flung down the hallway ahead of you. And now there's flaming trash spewing across the hallway. You know this is a bad thing. What do you do to fix this issue? Is there a fire extinguisher? Uh, yes, there is a, there's definitely going to be a fire extinguisher, but I'm going to give you... Okay, I'm going to roll a destiny dice. For anybody who forgets what this is, it's, I roll a d20. The higher on the D20, the better. The lower, the worse. This is going to determine 
how far away the fire extinguisher is from you. All right, this one relatively nearby. Now the the trash is spread out a lot, and you do know it's going to hit smoke alarms soon, unless you're able to extinguish it quickly. What skill do you have that's going to help you quickly and efficiently put out these fires before any smoke hits the smoke detectors? The aim slash call. I'm sorry, say that one more time, you cut out. The aim, uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to use your aim skill? Mm -hmm. That works. Um, because this is off of a failure, I'm going to make this difficulty check of four. You're definitely going to be able to put out the fire, but it's... The smoke has already started to gather. So you need to do this quickly to really disperse it so not enough smoke hits the de uh, detectors. How many dice are you going to have to roll on this? Uh, I have one for, for strength. I put three points in it. So, so you're going to have seven dice. Mm. Now, Carol, you are in the hallway with Mitch. You, you would you like to try to assist Mitch on this? If so, what skill? Yes. Now uh, he is. Oh. Now this is going oh. to be an assist, so it is going to be a gamble on whether or not you're actually able to help Mitch or get in Mitch's way. Oh shit! Huh? Can I use my vocation of marksman? Yes, you can use your vocation of marksman. You can actually either use that instead of aim, or use that to assist aim. Okay. Yeah, but I'm just going with aim. Okay. I think he would try to assist just because the last thing he's going to do is let someone else try and fix the problems. Okay, Caramel, what skill are you going to use? Or what skill is mass strength going to use to assist? <laughs> uh, let's go with police officer and aim because he's used to having to aim at things too. Uh, what like... are you aiming with? Like, what are you aiming here? I assume that he's going to take his jacket off, because it's a movie premiere, and try and smother the fires. I don't think aim's going to work for that, specifically. Hmm. Grapple? Like he's leaping onto the fires and trying to snuff out them? Let's see, this sounds like it might be an assist kind of move, but... I'll let you use athletics. Okay, that's fair. Okay, so... Wait, I have acro... Yeah, athletics. Perfect. Okay, so this is going to be an assist skill. So it's going to be... I'm going to give you the difficulty check off for three. That's the basic thing for assist. Okay. So... Add, or add three dice, plus your strength, plus your athletics. Every success above a three is going to count as automatic success for Cranky's World. Alright, so I see this. One, two... Man, I suck at these dice. Alright, so really, I take it back. I'm the shitty one today. Be cranky. You're going to have one less dice on your roll. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. It's the dice. Mass strength so I... rushes to try to help you put out the fires, but actually gets in your way when you try to aim the fire extinguisher. So now you have to shoot around mass strength. And if anybody doesn't know about fire extinguishers, it's actually really, really deadly. To hit somebody with the fumes from a fire extinguisher because what it does is that it sucks oxygen away from the area so you can suffocate somebody with a fire extinguisher so you're trying to not harm caramel while putting out the fires at the same time I'm putting out the fires in front of you and I just go with uh, pull him without regard for uh, Caramel's character and just aim I mean you're still gonna get the one point penalty So I have only B plus with my dice. So it's case. Okay, so what was it before? Three plus yep. your your aim strength. and your strength. So how many did you have total before? Uh, the base plus four. Okay, so you had seven dice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you have six dice, mm -hmm. and you need four successes. He can do it. I believe in him. <sighs> One, oh, two, three, man. four, five. That was a bit. <laughs> that, oh. that was a caramel. Wow. Uh, 
you are able to cover the hallway with the fumes from in fact so well that the entire hallway is kind of like painted white with the fire extinguisher um whatever you call it from there but there is like an outline of mass strength like an untouched outline in the hallway as if mass strength kind of laid there and did a snow angel of himself and does he have like little a little flame coming out of his hair like a cartoon character uh yes what was your character's name again mitch <laughs> well done, young Mitch! I knew you could! And I just paid a little bit extra to hide in his face. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that having a hallway wound up covered in white is very thematic for the picture that Cranky picked. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, we are done with this picture. Uh, you are all given a message within your minds, you know, like, good job. On to the next mission. And a door appears out of nowhere in front of you. And you know you must walk through it. Um, fellows, it appears our next mission awaits. Okay. Sorelia, okay. do you have your scenario written out yet? Or are you still I working on it? I have an image that would be okay. part of the scenario. To be honest, I also have a second image. Okay. Okay, so... Well, I don't know how much... You could make up this scenario. I have an image that. Okay, well, if, if you have an image, we'll just work with the image. Cranky, since we already did one from you, we're going to roll between Caramel and Cerelia. In fact, I'm also going to roll with uh, something that Cer Cilia has given me. So, one Cerelia, two Caramel, three Cilia. Oh, nice. Three Cilia. Cilia. Now, okay, funny thing is, like, when Cilia is like, oh my god. Oh my god, it was more than just, oh my god, there's so many here. <laughs> there's so many here. The so one, two, three, four, five, she, okay, so, funny story. Last night, so like, it's like, uh, Chobby, do you have an, uh, do you have an account on DeviantArt? And I'm like, hmm, I don't know, like, I, I used to be on DeviantArt, but I don't think I actually ever had an account. It's like, okay, so, since you don't have an account, you won't have to worry about any not safe for work pop-ups on the side, right? It's like, what should I worry about? Well, this artist, 80% of his work is, you know, safe for work. The other 20% are penises of wings. Sounds legit. Yeah, apparently this artist, like, the other 20% is like, instead of drawing pigeons, he draws penises with, like, the body of a penis and the rest is a pigeon. Okay, I kind of need to follow that artist. So, um, okay, I'm going to pick something random here that's... Celia has uh, sent me. Okay, here we go. It's showing up on stream. That's it is called cool. Allegory of Justice. Justice represented as a blind ferret triumphant over the duck of mute despair. <laughs> what the? <laughs> what the fuck, Celia? <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> Um, Just as presents as a point the plot's uh, already been solved. Of of mute despair. What the fuck? It's like Gravity Falls here. It's like the Duck Detective. Okay, okay. okay. <clears throat> you all enter this world, and it seems that the uh, law and order rules all the land with the furry palm of the mighty ferret justice system. But this is an imbalance. Every world needs to have balance. Some chaos and despair needs to be mixed in with law and order. Otherwise, the scales will be tipped too much in one direction. So, your job is to sow in a little bit of chaos and despair into the society. But not too much. We just want to balance things out. Otherwise, the duck population will forever be mute. Oh, Jesus, that's un unbearable. So, last we left off with uh, Cranky. So, Sorelia, what do you do to try to bring a little bit of chaos and despair to this society? That is run by the um... blind ferrets of justice. Hmm.
If you want to skip, well, you could, you can. Um, I'm going to skip for now. I need to think of, about it first. Okay. Caramel. So, hmm. Oh, this is tough. All right, so Matt's strength runs up to one of the ducks and stage whispers, Ha ha, duck of despair, you must learn to speak once more. Join me in a mighty bellow. Ha ha ha. As he holds the duck up towards the sky triumphantly. Alright, this sounds like a persuasion check. So, do you have any assist skills you want to assist with your persuasion? A uh, police officer? Like, trying to, like, I, I don't know, like, seem more official? Okay, so you want to see be seen as a person of authority? Yes. Authority and charisma. Alright. I'll give you a DC of 3 for your assist skill. Let's see how well you, you're able to assist on this. I will get 6 for that. 66. Oh, wait, actually, no. Fuck, I don't have anything for persuasion, so that'll be... Oh, I'm definitely going to fail this one. Uh, that's a 5. 6. 1, 2, oh, 3. Sweet. All right. You got 3 in the dot. Oh, the... wait, no, no. I rolled that backwards. I was supposed to be 5d6. Oh, oh, 65, okay. Oh, by the way, before you roll, before you roll, mm -hmm. since you guys succeeded in the last scenario, everybody gets a Destiny Dice. Do you all remember what this Destiny Dice is? No. Okay, so just like in D&D &D, with uh, Inspiration, you could do uh, use this to uh, for advantage. So, you could either choose to use your Destiny Point before a roll, if you do that, you give yourself advantage on your roll, meaning you just need a 3 or higher to succeed, as opposed to a 4 or higher on each dice. Or, you could save it for after a roll to give you one automatic success on a dice. Okay. I'm going to do that second one. Okay, well, if, if, you, if you're going to wait like for afterwards, like, you know, this, you only declare it like, when, you, when you miss, like, oh, I missed that by 1, I'm just going to use my my destiny point to just make even that out or whatever so you don't need to declare if you're going to use it afterwards until you actually need to use it afterwards all right perfect i'll re-roll it okay oh, and so. holy shit you got five successes nice. okay I, th I would only have four successes because it was a difficulty four no no difficulty four means um you needed to get you need to oh, succeed for you needed to see on oh. four of your dice but this one was oh, just okay, a difficulty of a three, so either way you, you succeed. Yay! So the mute duck, um, you can see a tear welling up in its eye as you carry him up and implore him to speak out his despair. He tries to crack out at once, but his voice is muted, and he tries again, and there's a little bit of a squeak into it. And eventually, his quacking becomes louder and louder, and more this ducks around much. him begin to notice, and they begin to flap their wings, and they begin to quack as well. Okay. <laughs> speak, young friends, speak! Let the world hear your despair! You notice that the ferrets in the area are quite upset at what's going on. Now, Sorelia, we skipped you. Are you ready to go? Um, yeah. Um, not... Uh, he will um, attempt to cause a bit of destruction. Uh, okay. What are you planning yeah. to do exactly? Grab the closest thing nearby and throw it. Okay, the, closest... the nearest destructible thing. Okay, the closest thing nearby, let's say, is a trash can. And the closest destructible thing would be Wait. the window to a store. Wait, how big is that trash can? The store? Uh, it's just big enough for you to be able to pick it up and cause damage with it. As in... Just a quick question. Like, how, how, how big is your character? I don't think we actually talked about how big your character is. We know it's a goblin, but what's your size? It's three feet. And how many points of strength do you have? Zero. <laughs> Alright, this might be a bit tricky for you then. Um, 
I want to say, say all of this need to die to see how full the trash can is. Alright, well, you know, I'm gonna roll this. I think you can throw an empty one, but a full one is too heavy. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to be a trash can. You're just looking for an object to, to throw. So I'm gonna roll a Destiny dice to see if there is something you are capable of throwing nearby. Uh, mm. it, because the ferrets of justice kind of rule this world in law and order, the place is a little bit too clean, a little bit too sanitary. And the trash cans are a little bit too heavy for you to efficiently throw. You might be able to push one over, but not be able to throw it. Mm. Well, in that case, am I able to then try to stealthily walk to a store window and just break the window? Yes. With your tools, you'll be able to... Like smash one window easily. Like these aren't the, uh, what do you call it? Like tempered glass, like the the really sturdy stuff. Because everything's so peaceful here, there's no need for that kind of things. Nobody would expect anyone to purposely break a window. So I will give you a difficulty check of a three on this. So let's see. Give that a three. Difficulty of three, four, five, above four. You got, you got four dice on this? Uh, I have a total of seven dice. Okay, well, you need to... The more successes you get above a three will change exactly how this goes. Four. Four, okay. You're able to stealth into a clothing store. You move, move in like this, like mannequins in the window. And you're able to like sneak in behind the mannequins, the ferrets nor the ducks really notice you. The ducks are too kind of depressed to really like lift their heads up off from this staring at the ground to see you. And the ferrets are blind, so they don't see you anyway. And you're able to pull out one of the tools that you took from your previous job and you're able to smash the window, causing great alarm to everybody nearby. This kind of thing doesn't happen around here, it's too peaceful. Why would a window just suddenly be shattered? And it seems that uh, everybody's grip on what's right seems to be a little bit shaken. Cranky Pants, you're up. Yeah. I will be back in a second. Okay. Honestly, I have been thinking what I can cause for chaos, but the only thing I can come up with is something brutal. Well, you do what you want to do. Caramel's gonna hit me for this. <laughs> Probably. I'm gonna find a lone dog somewhere. Oh, uh -oh. okay. You are able to find a, a dog on their own. And I'm snapping his neck. What the... I told you create... you're gonna hit me for this. <laughs> it's supposed to create chaos, not murder. <laughs> oh, no, believe me, I'm only halfway. Okay. What skill are you going to use to break this duck's neck? Um, aim so that I grab it at the right place around the neck? I don't think aim's going to work on this one. You could probably use athletics, grapple, or a straight up strength check. That does I need a uh, strength check. Okay. I'll keep the difficulty at, on out of three for this, since well, you're an orc and these are ducks. So it'll be three plus whatever points you have in strength. So, how many dice can I do I get normally? You get three base dice. Okay, that means that I fall because I have one strength. So you need to get three or higher. You get two. Destiny die? Yes, you can use your destiny point to... Boom. Boom. You succeed. You grab the duck who panics and is, like he's, is, squirms out of your grip, but you're able to grab back onto him and pull him back to you. And you twist his neck and it breaks. Okay. Now, this is just the first part of your plan. What's next? Rip the head off. What is going on? 
Okay, I'll allow you to... Wait, how many points do you have in strength? This one? One. Without a tool, this is going to be difficult. Like, I, I could have you do another strength check, but if you have a tool to help cut the head off, I'll, do, I'll let you just do it. Combat knife. Okay, that works. You're able to sever the head. And I will use the blood to write at several places. An o uh, the only good duck is a quiet duck. On several places where the dogs will see it. Now this, I'm going to need to do, do a stealth check to make sure that nobody actually sees you doing this. I have nothing in stealth, so that's going to be... Uh... Okay. Okay, well, you, you need it, then you need to succeed on all, three, all of them. I'm going to give you a three on, on this row. Three difficulty check. Fuck! You failed you every single one. You got zero. <laughs> well, you did cast chaos, I guess. Wait, 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 hold on. Can I use deception to convince the dogs that I was hired by the Beezle? Now, this is considered a crit failure. Um, I'm going to leave that up to the next person. Mitch begins to write on the wall, not realizing that he is in full view of a small group of ducks that just happen to be walking down the sidewalk. They quack out in shock and horror at this creature that they've never really seen before as a, seemed to have ripped the head off of one of their compatriots. Um, the order is kind of mixed up here because we had to skip. So, Caramel, what do yeah. you do to fix this issue? Oh, God, he had to... he's a gullible idiot. All right, so... Hmm. Yeah, Caramel, so, Mass Strength is going to look at what's going on and say, Friends, friends, it wasn't that ugly person over there. It was clearly the ferrets who did this. Now, since this is coming off a failure, the difficulty check on this persuasion is going to be a four. Yep, I remain unchanged. So let's see. So that, unfortunately, oh, that would be persuasion. Yes. Um, so again, I'm going to have to use uh, my police background and pray to Christ. Okay, so go ahead and do your assist with your police. Difficulty on that is going to be three, and you are going to get a one point, one dice penalty on this. Oh shit! Okay, so it'll be four d six then. Uh, and you you, so you so you need to get all four of them, and you get two. Well, I'm feeling lucky. You uh, got two. Well, well, what was the second roll for? Uh, I you I got a one dice penalty. Oh, oh, you know, never mind. I, I looked at the first roll and I saw that twice in my head. Never mind. Okay, so you you failed anyway. Yep. One bomb. Because even if I use my destiny to flick one up, then it would still be a failure. Although if you used it beforehand to get advantage, it would have been a success. That uh, doesn't think that far ahead. No oh, hindsight. They're stupid ferrets. Though. They're idiots. Um, ferrets. They're uh, they're sly. Trust me. Ah, oh, they're merely cats with short legs. They're actually related to wolverines, not cats. They're not. They're not feline. What do the X Men have to do with this disembodied voice? So you fail, Caramel. <laughs> the. Oh, so, does. Hmm. The, the duck. He like. I imagine he like stumbles around and like accidentally steps on the severed duck head. <laughs> um, you're trying to convince the ducks that it wasn't the orc that did it, but the ferrets who did it. But they don't believe you. And yes, you you walk over to your your comrade and you do end up stepping on the duck corpse, which still horrifies the rest of the ducks. And now they cry out murder. Why, this is exactly the size I could fit in this orc's pocket! And now, the ferrets of justice, their police force, show up to deal with the Am murderers. Am I still in the shop? Uh, 
You recently shattered the window, Cerulea, and you see this happening in not too far distance. What do you do? Whatever it is, it's going to be a 5 DC check to fix this. Well, uh... Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. That's the shady thief how to fix this. Um... Well, he's not entirely sure what is going on, why he's there, so he decides to try to sneak away with a mannequin. How does this help the issue, though? You need to do something to help fix this issue. Hmm. Well, uh... Yeah, I, I don't envy you in this situation right now. He is... Well... In that case, let's go a bit more crazy. Uh, he is going to attempt to stealthily um, walk up to one of those uh, ferrets and quack to con try and confuse it. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know. Give me, give me, a, give me a, de a deception check on this. Difficulty, a deception check. Yeah, it's a difficulty check is going to be a five. You need to get five or higher successes. You do have one destiny point. Um, I'm going to use my destiny points now. Okay, so you have advantage on this roll, so you need three or higher to succeed. Old five. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I managed to deceive it somehow. I really didn't think that was going to work. Um, you <laughs> whisper into the ear of several of the police ferrets. Quack. Not realizing that you are actually speaking the duck language. And you have convinced the ferrets that these murderers are actually agents sent by some evil duck organization. This rallies the ferrets together to try to put down this supposed duck rebellion that they didn't realize was going on. That really isn't going on. And they begin to go after the ducks as well as the orc and this mass strength character. But the ducks are having none of it, and they begin to fight back, causing anarchy in the streets. There's a full-on hey, riot man? and revolt going on right now. What did I just cause? Giving you and your allies enough of a diversion to escape. A door opens up in front of you all, waiting for you to walk through to your next mission. Alright, so somehow you guys were able to succeed there. How the hell did I manage to deceive the ferrets into thinking we were agents? You get a crit. You get a five successes on five roll on five dice. That's nuts. Okay. Next up is we just got uh Cerulea and Caramel who have not had their turns yet. So I'm gonna roll a D two. One Cerulea, two Caramel. It's really, Caramel, it looks like you're going to be last one. I know, right? Save it the best for last. Um, okay, Cerulea, so go ahead I and wanna send me the picture. That was super sad about the duck, by the way, like uh, crying and then um, finding its courage. Yeah, speaking of the crying duck. Oh, oh, oh. Um, oh. I am very displeased. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Babyface McGee's accent. You you are sent into a new, a different dimension. New to you. Uh, this dimension is absolutely filled <clears throat> with uh, man babies. They spend far, far too much time complaining about the most trivial things on Twitter. This is beginning to cause a great collapse in society, seeing as how the man baby spend more time complaining and less time actually contributing to society. Your job is to try to get these man babies off the internet and back to work. Interesting. We left off with us really a last. Um, so, Cranky, you're up. Um. Now, you're not in uh, like any specific environment. This is more of a, this is kind of like a global thing. So think of any kind of situation, any kind of scenario in which you could get the man babies to stop complaining and get back to work. First thing that comes to mind is shoot a fire around into the sky. Okay, and what are you trying to accomplish with that? Uh, basically, f to get their attention and basically create a little bit short factor of like, fuck, he has something. And if I get their attention, I will say, if you don't go to work, the next one will land between your eyes. So, this is going to be another like intimidation kind of thing. Yep. So, persuasion. Yeah, this will be persuasion. Okay, so that means that I have the base three plus three. Alright, difficulty on this is going to be a three. One, two, oh. three, four, five. Nice. Well done. You shoot several and rounds. Guns fix everything. It's like it's not just one location to do it. Like you go around the we'll say this happens like in the span of uh, a few days, maybe even weeks. Where you go around waving your gun, shooting randomly into the air. Threatening as many people as you. By the way, the term "man babies" doesn't specifically mean, you know, males. It's just like the human race, like adult babies. And you're just terrifying people to get off their phones, get off the internet, and get back to work. It works for a few. Uh, some are still glued to their monitors, their screens, but it is seeming seeming to have a small effect. Uh, Caramel, what do you do? So, Mass Strength is gonna walk up to the man babies and like start like flexing his muscles and making heroic poses and everything and like giving rousing speeches. Ha <laughs> ha, children! Think of all the wonders you can do if you go plus ultra! And like tries to inspire them into action. Okay, this will be another persuasion check. Ah, shit. <laughs> I was hoping I could make that athletics, but that that's that's fair. That is actually persuasion. All right, so three. Um, Difficulty so is going to be a five. three. Yep. Uh, three, six. One, Damn it. two. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to use my dice and flick up one of them. Wait, what? I, my little inspiration dice. Didn't you use that last time? No, oh, oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, you each get another destiny point for succeeding in the last one. So, Cameron, you oh, technically oh, have two. Oh, sweet, so I got another one then. Okay. I'll use my first destiny point. Okay, so you get three on the dot. Um, you begin to do your rounds and speech, and, and the small groups of the man babies begin to complain that, that you are idealizing an unrealistic, uh, unrealistic aspect of the human body. But others are actually inspired by your physical shape. And 
realized that maybe they should just stop staring at the monitors and get back into the gym and work off some of the winter fat. And stop eating oranges and ice water. And, and several of them begin to like this, begin to put gluten filled items into trash bins and set them on, on fire as they should. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's glue and hate is a joke between me and Caramel. Yeah, as, a bug, as a baker, I feel dog at that. You should, because gluten is amazing. Well, you, you can make, like, you know, stuff out of almond flour. That's not gluten. Which is three times more expensive than normal flour. Yes, and almonds are well, bad for the environment. Yeah, that, that's a poor person. Right, no, that's a poor person problem, a okay? Make one almond. Yeah, it's a poor person problem, okay? Alrighty now, Mr. <laughs> Bill over here. Okay. Right, okay. Iron Man computer. Alright, so Relia, Women you're can up. join Iron Man too. Well, well I, I, yeah. I, but yeah, uh, Iron Man is like man as in human. It's like a mankind. It's not specific to a gender. Yeah. Be a human person. No, it's a hum it's human. <laughs> um, so Relia, your turn. How are you going to inspire the, the man babies to be a productive member of society? I'm going to try to deceive them. Right, deceive how, them with this. <laughs> how are you deceiving them? I am going to try to. Well, uh, Nag is going to say, guys, if you help the society you will get way more candy you won't you will get more time you will even be rewarded well if you don't well you will j only complain more and more you won't get anything isn't that the real problem in the world these days <laughs> hey hey when art becomes reality right so <laughs> All right, so you're trying to trick them into thinking that they will be rewarded for being productive. Exactly. So, so go ahead. Another, again, difficulty check three. So go ahead and roll a deception on this. Because everybody knows deception. hard work doesn't get you anything. And it's higher than four, right? Yep, you need three or higher. Yep. It's three or higher? Oh, no, it's the DC check is three. You need a four or higher on your dice. Yeah. I got and zero. You, wow. No, there we go. That's the sorry we know. That is a crit failure again. That it's is a crit months. failure. Um, they all snarl at you, seeing that they are helping society by pointing out all his imperfections. <laughs> this is too painful. <laughs> um, and they seem even more intent, and they begin to complain about you. On, on their social medias and begin to try to cancel the goblin. But isn't that in fact also racism towards the goblins? Uh, well, yeah, it, it, it also kind of mirrors reality where people that claim that they're not racist are actually being racist. So, yeah, so, so yes, I'm, I don't mean to be racist, but. So and then my mind, my ears are already shut because I don't want to listen. Some are perfectly racist. All right, so Mitch, you see everybody turn on the goblin and begin to try to cancel him and dox him, and uh, try to contact his family just to tell him how terrible this goblin is. And it seems to have a reverse effect, and people or or the man children, or the baby children or whatever man babies, are more fervent now to be on their social medias. How do you turn this around? I should have been gone and done the, the obvious and from the beginning. Destroy Where are the these man child's baby uh, mothers? Oh, this is like, this is throughout the world. Hmm. Fuck. Um... And I throw the goblin. What are you trying to accomplish here? Why would here? you try to throw me? I will throw him and then I will say, see what your bickering has brought. 
but being in suffering. Now keep in mind that yeah. they are trying to cause suffering to the goblin presently. Okay, I will throw him and I legit will be like, there, happy, now go to work. Okay, so your attempt is to punish the goblin. To try to get them to stop punishing the goblin because he's already been punished so they could get to work. Yep. Alright. Um, give me a persuasion check. And... Uh, action, wait, what is, yeah, uh, uh, persuasion, deception, I'll let you choose. And it's going to be a four difficulty check. One, two, you got two. They begin to complain even more, seeing that apology wasn't enough, and they need more. They, so they, they, de seen... they demand more punishment because okay. saying sorry never works. Caramel. So I just noticed that with an yes. earlier roll of Cerulea, it told a three as a success. Well, because Cerulea used his destiny point to give himself advantage on that roll. If you spend your destiny point before the roll. Threes and hires become successes. Okay, Caramel. So I still yeeted the goblin, but it didn't get the result what I wanted. No. You yeeted no the goblin. No result or no one yeeting? Nope. Uh, j just like in social media, if you apologize, they just want more apologies. And they demand more. That sounds about right, actually. So, Caramel. Last chance. This is going to be, whatever you choose, is going to be difficult to check of a five. To succeed on this. Oh shit! Okay. Uh. So. Oof. Um. Mass strength is going to pick up all of his weights that he just carries with him everywhere and press them into the goblin's hands and basically make him work out and say, "Ha! Look at this man, babies! By making him work out, he can become better. Punishment that leads to rewards." What skill? Like, there's a few skills that will work on here. What are you trying Athletics, to use? Athletics, because it's like pumping iron and everything. We can do that. Are you going to use any assist skills on here? Um, probably wrestler, just because he needs to make it look as convincing as possible. Okay. The difficulty check on the um on the assist is going to be three. So every point you get above three is going to add a success for you. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so, all right. Um, oh, Christ, don't. I still feel me now. Um, Christ! Um, you you get yeah. a two-point penalty Oof. on this check. A two-point penalty. Damn, that's going to be tough. Yeah, there's no, there's no way. I can even, even if I use my Destiny die to roll up one of the extras... It still doesn't work. Does anybody else want to help assist the camera on here? I am not entirely sure I would be able to with my skills. You could try like lifting the weights or making it look like you lift like, the weights. The only way Caramel is going to be able to succeed here is if, if somebody is able to succeed in an assist check to give Caramel enough points. Am I able to assist with a stealth how will stealthily trying to help her? How would stealth work in this situation? I don't know. Make it look like she's uh, he's doing it better than That would be a deception. Anything. That would be a deception. Let me try deception then. Okay. Draw <laughs> DC three for this assist. Two uh, you get another negative one, Caramel. You got three less dice to roll. Um, Sorry, Caramel. Uh, what's the name of your character again? Oh, mine? No, no, um, Cirelli's character. Neck. Uh, no. Yeah, Neck. Neck. Um, neck, you try to make it look like you're able to work out more easily than you can, but... You just have the reverse effect and you make yourself look more foolish when you attempt to do it, causing the penalty. Uh, Mitch, I don't know what you could do to assist, but you are the last hope here. 
I was planning on basically start lifting the weights like Cerulea was planning to do. And I thought that, yeah, I'm bigger and I'm an orc, so. Okay, so it will be an athletics check for you. All right, you need to get at least three successes above a three to cancel out all the penalties Camel got so she could even have a chance at this. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's go. You get a four-point penalty on your roll, Camel. That's when you die. <laughs> okay. So, for somehow, like, he is, like, struggling to hold up this little goblin. He's like, grr, grr. Like steam. Oh, no, no, I'm using an destiny die to. Uh, because um, I needed a base three, right? It's not gonna work. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would recommend get... saving the destiny die because it's go Caramel's gonna fail regardless of what happens now. Uh, yeah, the, these uh, man babies are beyond help. Okay, so Caramel, while you're trying to lift the weights, um, knock Nick, uh, the goblin. I, I keep forgetting his name. Knack. Knack and Mitch are trying to also pump the weights, but you're all getting in each other's way. The dumbbells. The, the bars, they're just kind of clinking into each other. And you're making fools of yourself in front of the man babies, which caused them to just ridicule you more on social media. Now, more than ever, um, at least for the next couple days, they have a target for their ridicule, and they are glued to their monitors. Friends, um, I believe this is a lost cause. Let us escape. A door opens up, and you hear a voice in your head. It's like, uh, social media is too powerful of a foe for anyone. Now let's move on to the next dimension. Ha <laughs> ha, what timing! Alright. Finally, Caramel, we get to you. By the way, we do have yeah. more stories. Like, if you guys have more pictures, we definitely keep going. And Celia sent me, like, a few uh, dozen Several dozen, actually. So we could go on to like next weekend if we wanted to. For today, I probably only have time for one or two more, but next okay. weekend might be fun. Okay, so yeah, let's I let's got roughly seven minutes. Okay, so let's finish Don't this off with what either. Caramel sent me. What the fuck, Caramel? <laughs> so um, best for yeah. last. You coming to the pickle one? Um, it is a pickle. Uh, gigantic, uh, sentient pickles. With uh, legs? With, I just noticed the legs. Uh, did you draw this or did you find this? I, I wish, no, this is one of my favorite artists. On, on a, oh, Ron, Ron Spencer. Spencer. Okay, we're going to go very basic on here. Um, it's Attack of the Killer Pickles. Pickle, Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, pickles are rampaging through the streets. Fighting against their human oppressors who have held them down for too long. Your job is to help the Rampaging Pickles succeed in their revolution. Didn't oh, think we're I was... helping the Pickles. Oh, I didn't see yeah, that. Yeah, you didn't think I was going to go that way, huh? I did not. Okay, I was fully prepared. I had a whole long list of things to do. All right. Now, while the Pickles are many and they're savage, there's little they can do against the human military, which have tanks and bombs and guns. So it's up to you to help disable the human military so the Pickles could finally rule this world for themselves. Uh, I don't know if I want to play anymore. Pickles are disgusting. What do we leave out? Okay, Cerulea. Yeah. What do you do? Well... Nag is just going to look around, uh, completely lost in thought, trying to rem remember what, where he is. Uh, so are you, are you skipping your turn? I'm skipping. Yeah. Cranky Pants, what do you do to help the pickles? Well, the only thing I do know, I run into the military and I provide my services as a marksman. Now, keep in mind that you're working against the human military. Oh. You're helping the pickles. Exactly, yeah, we're, hel we're helping the pickles. 
Okay. You see, but the pickles then can't I will do much try against to it. deceive the humans by saying that I will help them because I look like a military character. But, but without their knowledge, I will start sabotaging certain things. All right, perfect. Roll me up a deception check. Difficulty check yeah. three. Uh, I saw many fucking pictures of it. Uh, yep, yep, yep. One, hey. two, three, on the dot. All right. With the giant swarms, the Zerg swarm of pickles, rushing each of the human settlements, they are glad for any help they can get. You are welcome to their ranks, which gives you access to many of their um, like electronics. You get there into their communication systems, so you are able to sabotage their communications, giving them wrong information. So they are always caught off guard with pickle ambushes. Caramel. What do you do to help the pickles succeed? I'm going to offer my services as a professional wrestler and heave them over the human lines one by one. So you're going to hurl the pickles over the human lines to get them behind enemy line. Exactly. All right. Uh, this will be an athletics check. Yep. Well, I also have aim throw, but it's the same. Well, you same could you, you could choose point. either. Either one will work. That yeah, is fine. Yeah, we'll just do athletics. Okay. Difficulty check of the three. One, oh, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. That is, that, that is a crit on a seven. <laughs> Looks like we're all cool as a cucumber now. Okay, you hurl them like a gridiron football over the line, like <laughs> one after another. It's it's like you're firing missiles into the sky. They are just rocketing far beyond the lines, like into the enemy HQ area, <laughs> and like over and Humans over and over again, like a rock. Like a rocket barrage. You are double, like, with both arms, you're throwing them at the same time. Yes. <laughs> and the pickles are quickly able to swarm behind enemy lines to get to their, um, to their targets. It looks like this is no big deal. Uh... <laughs> All right. All right. Uh... <laughs> uh... Damn it! Okay, Sorelia, please, please save us all. You're next. Um. Yeah. Nak will try to teach the um, giant pickles to sneak. Okay, so you're gonna try to. Help the pickles create a stealth ops unit to Metal Gear yes. Solid their way into the human military forces. Exactly. All right. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, we can just do stealth on this. Difficulty three. Teach them how to stealth. That's a seven. All right. This should be easy then. Three successes. Okay, you get it on the dot. All right, so the the pickles they put on like a camo outfits. They they have the little like the, the black marker thing underneath each of their eyes because I think they have eyes. Yeah, they do. And and they have like French berets on. And then they get into cardboard boxes and they're able to sneak behind the enemy lines <laughs> to help ambush the military units. Cardboard now, barrels. Oh. Now, because now pickle, pickle monsters who are literally dropping like missiles. We have pickle monsters who are walking in cardboard boxes. Yeah, Thought you received the best for last. Yeah, like falling <laughs> from the sky like missiles, invading like <laughs> invading like in cardboard boxes, and communications are all mixed messed up. The hu mankind. Is on the brink of destruction at this point. <laughs> and they are going to do the very last option. They see defeat is on the, the horizon, but they will not give up this world to the pickles. They decide to go nuclear. 
If they can't have this world, they will not leave it to the pickles. So they are going to blow everything and everyone up. This is going to be a combined skill check. The difficulty rating on this is going to be a 5. Interesting. So you guys will have to decide who's going to use what skill and the other two must use an assist. Um, yeah, let's see. So how are you going to stop nuclear Armageddon? We are either going to force How many it. places are they launching uh, the rockets from? Now this is going to be like a worldwide kind of thing. Like um, the, whatever you guys come up with, this could be something that takes place over a span of several days, weeks, or even months, or even a few minutes, depending on what you decide to do. It's up to you to Let's decide say, how you're going to stop this. If we could get um, Cranky's character to like shoot the guys trying to press the buttons or something like that. Oh yeah, that's why. Far. That's why I asked. Yeah, because... I would either that or try to just straight up see but persuade them to not do it. Okay, so we have a couple of options here. You want to go with the assassination route where Mitch assassinates the the leaders deciding to push the buttons and the one a, ones actually pushing the buttons. If you decide to go this route... It's actually more like the people that have the keys and then steal the keys. Yeah, you could do that as well. That is, what, that's Stealing another option. Stealing the keys, I will have a decent amount since I've got a 7 in slot of hand. Okay, so the, a persuasion was also brought up, if you guys want to go that route. So you three decide what you're going to do. Like I said, it's going to be one check, DC5, the other two must assist. I have um, Ride Pilot as a skill, so we could use that to like get around the world in like a sweet motorboat or something to stop them. And then you guys go and like take the keys. Because I have nothing in persuasion, deception, or anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I could give you this scenario, like from what you guys said, it could be a situation in which Mitch begins assassinating the targets. Um, Mac, was it? Yep. It steals the keys, while Karam, um, Mass Strength is the getaway driver. Is that the gist of what you three are trying to do? I think that sounds fine. I think so, yeah. Okay, so who's going to be the main roller and who's going to be the assist? Uh, if the one who isn't the main roller, can they use their um, well, destiny dice? Everybody can use their destiny dice if they have it still. So it looks like um, Mitch is going to be using, I assume, aim, while Knack is using stealth and Mass Strength is using ride. I will not main roll because I've only got one point in ride, not two. Okay, so you're going to be an assist. Who wants to be the main roll? Uh, Sorelia, Cranky Pants? Um, I I'm would say dead. let's go for the highest roller. The highest dice ho die holder. Let's go with Cranky. Ah, yeah. I have a plus four on uh, aim. Let's How many in total? So that'll be uh, seven dice you would have a name? And I will be spending my destiny point to get advantage. Okay. Yeah, we, we both got destiny points left us, the two of us. Okay. But yeah, I got a seven as well, so Cranky can be the main. Okay, so we'll go to the assist first. Caramel, you're the most dangerous one of your assist, so we'll start with you. Hey, so let's see. Difficulty on this is going to be a three. Yes. So how many so I would roll if I have one in this, so that'd be a six. Okay, so you get your base three, you get your yep. one for your ride, and ride yep. is what? Reflex? Uh, yes. How many points do you have in reflex? Uh, zero. So then you get four dice. No, four. You get four total. Six. And I'm using my uh, destiny roll. Okay, so this is your last destiny point, so you need threes or higher. And as he goes to push down the gas pedal, he goes, United States of Smash! Three in the dot, you don't add, but you don't take away either. United States of okay. Smash comes through once again. Okay, it's Relia. Your assist. You got seven dice, right? Yep. Go ahead and roll it up. And you're using your destiny? Now I am. 
One, two, three, four. You used it after, so you got five yeah. successes. Cranky, you have two automatic successes on this. So since the okay. DC was a five, now it becomes a three. Okay. So go ahead and roll up your dice. You said you're using your destiny point? Yep. Go for it. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Right on the dot. So, but um, I have to go now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Thanks, you'll sir. see. Um, hold up. I just got somebody in the, uh, at the door. Uh, thank you for showing up so early. I'll be right back, guys. Hey. Bye, sir. I know. The, 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 the cliffhangers. The thing is, Cogent is always, again, getting used to, in my opinion. Is getting what now? Is getting used to. Because I'm so oh, yeah, used I... to the D&D rules and such. Same. I, I'm not sure if I really care for it that much, but eh, it, it, it's easy to start. I'll give it that. Ah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, my blue apron box has showed up. No worries. I needed to get it out from the hot sun. Okay. Uh, Sorelia is left, but you guys succeeded. <clears throat> so you put together a plan to stop all the United Nations all the uh, first worlds from launching the nuclear weapons you <clears throat> mass strength was able to get everybody to the location they needed right on time after the information uh, Mitch was able to get from a sabotage to know where to go using his sharp aim he was able to assassinate the targets when needed and knack with stealth abilities was able to place himself just at the right moment just at the right place to quickly snatch the keys soon after each assassination attempt so nobody can launch the missiles the pickles quickly overran the human resistance and now without anyone to oppose them they rule the world you see a door open up in front of you well done off to your next mission And once again, the day is saved. And that is where we. <laughs> and that is where we're going to end today's D and D game. <laughs> that was fun. Well, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you had fun. Um, what do you think, Cranky? It was different. I can say that. <laughs> Definitely was different. <laughs> uh. I mean, I was really... Well, I, fi I figured I was going to get caught off guard with some of these images. By far, the, the one that kind of stumped me... Well, okay, all of them stumped me to a point. But I think the Ferret of Justice... Really kind of threw me for a loop. The Man Baby thing was... Weird. That grew organically really quickly, though. Yeah. I mean, let me see. How many Cilia sent me? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, Jesus 19, Christ. 20, 21, 22, uh, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, uh, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, uh, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, at least 70. Yeah, I was supposed to only ask for one. Uh, oh, and um, there's uh, two more that she said goes together. Oh, and she oh she gifted me Nitro. Here, let me go ahead and accept that. I accept. Um, and I might have miscounted. There might actually be more. Yes, I, I did say, you know, like one, maybe two, uh, but it's I think Celia fell down a rabbit hole here. I think she just started looking through deviant art. I was like, "Oh, this looks oh, nice. This looks nice. This looks nice." And just kept going and going and going. Oh, piss candy. Oh, piss candy. <laughs> I'm just looking at the names here: Goblin Cattle Wrestler. How griffins are made. How oh, griffins are made. <laughs> um, okay, I'm not gonna open that. I'm gonna save that for like maybe maybe down the road we could return to this game. If you guys want that. Yeah. Sure. I like I like I like shit like this because it's silly. One time I can do whatever the fuck I want. Like, 
I, I think that's funny. And don't have to feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, uh, starting off with what with what Cranky said, that 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 was <laughs> that was one hell of a way to start off this game. <laughs> I, I, that was very clever, making it movie theater related. I was thinking that we we're all going to be in a torture chamber like Clockwork Orange or something. And I, I love the Clockwork Orange movie, but when I saw that scene, I was like, oh, I know what happens in this scene. Yep, it's uh, a, it's uh, family, a bad one. Uh, family safe, family safe. How do we do this? How do family we do this? safe. Fucking <laughs> Crick. <laughs> but yeah, I had a great time. Thanks for playing, guys. All right. And thank you, everybody that showed up to uh, lurk in the background. Watch on Bait Shooter YouTube. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going back to playing fi Final Fantasy. Shal and I are going on our fishing adventure with our cat people. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, actually, I gotta clean up the place a little bit. Celia's mom is gonna show up today and take us out to dinner, and oh, neato. Yeah, and the place is a mess, so I'm gonna have to clean it up real quick. So also, uh, Coco, let me know what Celia thought of uh, the snacks. Oh yeah, I'll Can tell I her. I'll tell her to put her opinions up on the Discord. Right now, I dare not wake her up. It's gonna be 1 p.m. here, and it's still too early for her on a Sunday. Yeah, that's Ricky too. I'm just like, nope, don't wake her up. Don't wake her up. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm just happy that you liked them. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try out another one of these uh, coffee treats. I'm gonna eat my elf, myself up some oat milk and uh, drop a, one of those coffee treats in there and see how it goes. I'm yeah, you need to stir it quite a bit to be honest. But oh, I got a knife right here. I can stir it. I would use scissors, but I don't know where that is. It's <laughs> <That's> the stir. <laughs> yeah. Well, scissors are practically two knives in one. <laughs> he, he ain't wrong. Hi guys, I found the bard. All right, well, thank you everyone for showing up. Thank you, Caramel, Cranky, Sorelia. I will see you all next time. Later. Awesome, thanks guys.